Hey guys, today we're taking a look at the JCN X Hunter e-bike. This is a 750 watt folding design e-bike. 48 volt, 750 watt, budget friendly, so it's something you guys might be able to just pick up if you like it. Let's just get this thing out of the box and see how it is. All right, so we're looking at the Jason X Hunter e-bike. This is, again, a 750 watt, 48 volt e-bike. It's a full suspension. They call it a mountain bike. It has adjustable handlebars, adjustable seat, and obviously it is foldable as well. And uh, I'll show you guys that in just a second. It has a seven speed Shimano shifter on it. And here's the gears down here. It will obviously function as a normal bicycle if you turn the bike off or turn it on pedal assist zero. But today they sent this to the Inja, so we're not gonna be pedaling this thing at all. <laughs> I'm basically just relying on the powertrain for my tests of this thing. When you're buying an e-bike, you're really paying for an electric powertrain, not so much like a super high end bicycle like you know riding it without powertrain so you're really paying for the powertrain of e-bikes so that's what my job is to test out is the powertrain so today i'm going to be testing this out without pedaling it just full throttle just seeing how many miles we get out of this thing on just the powertrain also grabbing a top speed while we're here as well but anyway right now i'm just giving you guys kind of a quick look an overview of the bike before we actually start testing it out and this is one bike that actually functions to turn the bike on, you actually need to turn the key on. Some people like that. I usually prefer just to have an e-bike that functions without a key, just be, you know, because you never really carry keys around for your bicycle. I, I feel like they tend to get lost a little bit easier, but as long as you know you need your key, I guess you'll keep a better eye on it. <laughs> All right, going over software really quick. Hold down the middle M button. So software, I've seen the screen before. Software is pretty simple. It goes up to pedal assist five and clicking the M menu button it'll click through various little things. I need to see if I can figure out how to unlock this thing. I mean, we have a half throttle over here, so twisting this will give you throttle power. We have a headlight button that does in fact turn on and off the headlight. Here's the horn. I'm gonna, I'm gonna beep the horn really quick, so headphone users beware. <laughs> that was a lot louder than I expected. Well, it has a very loud horn, so you could definitely beat people out if you need to. As far as suspension goes, you guys can see mid shock here for the rear, and then we have uh, forks up front here as well. We have disc brakes front and rear, but these right here are just extra miscellaneous keys I've had from e-bikes in the past, and I still don't know what they go to. <laughs> but anyway, I just checked the price on this thing again, and this thing is going for $1,100. So when I said it was budget friendly before, I was not joking. <laughs> I'll just give you a quick shot of their website. Literally just go check this out if you're actually interested in the bike. There's a link below. It has a 750 watt hub motor in the rear, obviously. 55 mile range is what they estimate. That's probably on like pedal this is one with like a super light rider so we're probably not going to hit that <laughs> top speed 28 miles per hour it's limited at 20 as far as i know 48 volt 13 ah battery 20 inch tires and full suspension um, so that's what you guys are looking at with the jason x hunter e-bike but anyway right now i'm going to get this thing on the road for first impressions while well, i'll take you guys along on the ride with me we'll see how powerful it is how well it rides and just overall build quality top speed and then i'll take it on a full extended range test to see how many miles we get throttle only and only powertrain no pedaling so anyway let's get to it let's get this thing on the road so i'm going to go ahead and do a speed run folding this thing all the way up for you guys to see how easy it is or how hard it is time starts right now boom time what is that freaking fast that's what it is and then folding it back up obviously just do that Clamp that sucker right in. Boom, boom, boom. bam. All right, well, I figured it out. It is the up and down arrow together. We'll go into the settings and it's P08. We'll get you to the uh, top speed, I believe. I don't know the exact parameter what that actually changes, but I'm assuming that's the limiter because I set it higher and now we have a much higher top speed. So if I just crank the throttle, 
That sucker flies. I already like this bike a lot. This is probably one of my favorite style designs of bike. Just the folding, the folding e-bike with like the cross member, fat tires and everything. These kind of bikes are just so much fun. And this one is definitely no different. Oh, sheesh, the seat I need to tighten a little bit. It's like rocking back and forth on me. Decently quick, it's not bad. Suspension does its job well. Not many bumps at all, but like you can still feel the road a little bit. It's not like super floaty. Brakes work all right, but I think they are cable driven, so they're not hydraulic brakes, but they work fine. With the cable brake, it's easier to adjust, so there you go. <laughs> and nice and smooth and feels really well built. There's nothing like jiggling around or rattling or anything. And it has some, like it has very nice direct input to the rider. Not bad at all, dude. Obviously the two main specs that I'm looking for to tell you whether or not it's worth it, or at least you, you know, just show you guys what it actually gets for the price is the top speed and the full range. So I'm gonna definitely hit up a top speed run right now once we get to this little corner. All right, well, last e-bike I tested was 19.8 mile per hour top speed and we're gonna blow right past that. So I'm not even gonna worry about resetting it. So let's freaking do it. We're tracking. So let's get this thing on a top speed run. And if it doesn't break 90 miles per hour, it's definitely not worth the price. But still, this is 1100 bucks. I cannot believe this thing is 1100 bucks for a full size freaking folding e-bike that does 28 miles per hour is what they claim. 29.6, 30. Let's see if we actually get that. I, I suspect I'm going about 27, maybe. We will see, we will see. But I am six foot three at 215 pounds or something. So that gives you a frame of reference, at least to know what kind of rider you're looking at. Cause rider weight and height really does make a difference on e-bikes, it really does. If you're smaller than I am, you will definitely get better specs all around. Survey says 29.1 boys for 1100 freaking bucks. Dude, I'm highly impressed with this. Now, if I had to guess, this is a Jason X Hunter e-bike. I've never heard of that brand before, so they're probably up and coming, and they're probably just pricing their bikes super good to just freaking fly them off the shelves at this point. I feel like the price of this thing from this first ride and the first experience is going to go up over time, probably. Really no complaints here. The only thing I think that cable brakes are technically not as good as hydraulic brakes, it's kind of a different drive system for the brakes. I'm just going to take this right now on a full range test to see how good this thing is. For 1100 bucks, I'm not going to complain with this thing. All right, so let's talk about a few common questions I always get asked. First and foremost, how does it do pulling up hills? How torquey is it? That kind of thing. So you can see me taking this bike trail underneath a bridge and then coming back up. It's actually a pretty decent slope and it does lose a few miles per hour here and there going up it. Not as bad as some e-bikes, not as good as other e-bikes. This bike is definitely not the torqueiest bike I've ever experienced, but I think it's just because the tires are really big on this bike. Maybe that's why it has a high top speed and maybe not quite as much torque as I'd expect. Who knows? It's still really not bad though. Driving off road, obviously this bike is very comfortable. It has front and rear suspension and large fat tires. So you really don't feel many bumps at all. Very comfortable bike, full size. It's a very big bike, fit my body well. I, I really don't have many complaints. The only thing I did adjust midway through the ride was the brakes and I'd had to tighten the seat down because it was just loose, but the brakes were easy enough to adjust. You know, obviously not as good as hydraulic brakes, but still you can adjust them and it gave me a nice solid pull after I adjusted on better. And then here's the last clip of it, basically on a depleted battery going extremely slow. All right, you guys, day number two comes to a close with this bike. I just killed the battery all the way and we got just over 19 miles on one charge. So the software on this bike is my favorite software as far as like depleted battery goes. So when the bike was starting to die, it just got slower and slower and slower. Some bikes actually like cut off and the screen goes black, everything just stops working. But with this particular software, it just gets slower and slower as the battery depletes. Now, obviously you don't wanna run these completely dead if you can avoid it, but it's not gonna kill the bike if you accidentally have to deplete the battery on the way home. However, tonight we ran it completely dead and got just over 19 miles on one charge. So there you have it, about 20 mile range. Again, I'm bigger than the average rider. Anyway, I'm gonna get some sleep and we'll bring you guys back tomorrow.
Woo, plenty of power. All right, day number three with the JCN X Hunter e-bike. Today, I'm just gonna show you guys a few clips of it actually in action, all right? And we're gonna get a brake test right now, live and late braking, let's do it. You guys saw that in day number two, I actually um, tightened the seat down <laughs> when I was riding it that first time. It, it <laughs> so I tightened the seat down, it's been good ever since. And I did adjust the brakes. It is cable driven, as I was telling you guys before. The cable is actually very easy to adjust. It actually has an adjustment nut right here that you can tighten it at the actual brake end. And it also has the adjustable um, cables at the lever end as well. So it made it super easy, but I also did just unloosen it and actually pull the wire tighter. It gives you a really solid pull now. All right, and a brake test, three, two, one. Both levers pulled all the way, so it's not great, but It'll stop you, it'll stop you. I'm not gonna complain, 1100 bucks for a full size folding e-bike like that, that gets 29 miles per hour and 20 miles per charge. I am not gonna be complaining about one foot more distance of braking. I'm thoroughly satisfied with this bike, that's for sure, for the price. But yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. That's really all I have to say. I'm just gonna keep saying it for the price. There's nothing to be dissatisfied with. It's a very well-built, pretty high quality bike all around for 1100 bucks to your freaking door brand new like i'm not going to be complaining about that and i know 1100 bucks sounds like a lot but if you know anything about e-bikes like 1100 bucks is nothing is nothing for a decent e-bike there are cheaper ones out there yeah but those ones are so cheap you guys know i've tested the cheap of the cheap ones those things are absolute garbage pretty much under a thousand dollars just don't waste your money but anyway for the price this is a really well built Really good bike. Does have a freaking storage rack on it. You can put all your groceries and your kids, your whole family if you want. And it has a twist throttle as well. I do not like the thumb throttles if you can avoid it. The thumb throttles are okay, but they get so uncomfortable if you're really riding this thing for hours. But this one I could genuinely say that it's actually a really good bike for the price. And if you, if you don't like it that much, it was 1100 bucks. Like it's not gonna break the bank. The money will come back. They'll probably raise the prices over time. So anyway, there's a link below if you guys want to check it out. I'm definitely gonna give this to my dad. He just bought a cabin in the mountains and he's been looking for an e-bike exactly like this. So I think I'll gift this one to my dad. And I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching.